Hi folks, welcome to my shop. We're going to show you how to do three different lap joints and we're going to use three different, three different methods. One I'm going, to, the mitered one, I'm going to do with just hand tools. The uh, end lap I'm going to do on the table saw, a band saw, sorry. And this T lap I'm going to do on the table saw. All right, let's get started on this one. I'm, going to, I'm using northern white pine. Why? Because it's real easy to work. Lovely stuff to cut, plain, chisel, the whole bit. And these pieces are two inches wide. So this one we're going to do with hand tools. So we'll lay it out first. I'm going to use a pencil and my combination square. And if you don't have a combination square, you might want to consider one. It's so handy, particularly on stuff like this. First thing I want to do is make sure my ends are nice and square. So I'm using my shooting board and my five and a half. When you do that, you first have to put a little chamfer on the far side so that you break, don't break those fibers off. I'll just note that that's the squared off one. All right, so we use the 45 gauge on this. We're going to, we're starting right up in the corner, come down here. Now this half of the joint that is, is going to be cut like so. This will be removed, this will be removed, this will be removed. We'll keep that part. And on this one, which is the easier of the two, we simply cut the miter. And that'll be cut all the way off. And then that one is going to be cut or undercut on the bottom side. So we'll draw this one too so that you can see what's going to be removed. Shouldn't have let my line go wild right here. No, that's not true either. What I shouldn't have done is let it go wild right here. All right, now I'm confused. Mark for me. Mm -hmm. Just mark for me. Cut off. So, I don't no, let's just let's just do it. Do it, and then it'll be easier to explain. I'm going to use my bench hook, and on my bench hook, I've made provisions for a 45 as well as a 90. So this is the one. I'm going to save the line and take it off or go right down to the line with the shooting board. And I have a shooting board that is made to cut or to plane 90 degrees. Pardon me, 45 degrees. I'm using a crosscut saw known as our joinery crosscut saw. Okay, slide this one over, make room for another one. And that will come in and trim that to 45. Okay, now we've got to remove this back side. And I've got to change that line I made so I can get it right on. Actually, let's use a knife here. More accurate. So I'm right on the point of this miter. Now I'm going to use my marking gauge. And we've got to split this in half. So what I'll do first is guess 
make a little mark and then reference from the other side and I went a little bit too far so we'll pull this in a little bit make a mark flip it over oh, I need some light I lost the mark altogether, so let me make a mark here. Yeah, that lines up. Okay, so we're removing the bottom part. So I want to have the bevel on the uh, side that's going to be actually removed. I need to carry this mark over. And the reason I'm doing it like this is so that the bevel stays on the waist. If not, then you had no material to be able to clean up with if the bevel was on this side and you put the joint together, it's gonna to show as a gap. Okay, so now we need to go in and as accurately as possible, we need to make that cut. Identify our waist. I'm going to cut right down to that line. So I'm just going to put a pencil mark on here so it's a little easier to see it while I'm sawing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to come in here with a chisel and give myself a little trough to follow. And what I'm doing is cutting up against that knife line I made. And that will provide a little wall to rest the saw against. I'm going to make that a little bit deeper. Now, it'd be great if I can get this, assemble this right from the saw. So the idea is to line that up carefully. Hold the saw level so I don't end up cutting too low. A little bit more on the back side. Actually, I don't need that anymore. I can just use the cut. Okay, now we're going to use a rip saw, also known as a tenon saw, and I'm I'm not I'm going to uh, remove the bulk of it and I'm going to use a router plane to go in there and uh, get it precise. Set this one aside because we're going to end up using that router plane at the, on both pieces. Now on this one, I'm going to use my gauge again, only this time I'm going to knife that line. Going right from the far point, meaning out here. Keep your knife standing plumb. That'll give you a square cut 
on the side that matters. If you don't, you, then you risk having a gap in your joint. Now, this one, I'm putting the face of the tool on the waist side. So again, the bevel is going to be in the waist, not on the side we keep. Okay, so we'll go in here. Now, I can't really do that, so I'm going to have to just do it like this. Actually, let's go in and do the exact same procedure we did last time and get that little knife wall. For the amount of time that this takes, it's a real help. Come a little bit deeper. Same tenon saw to go in there and clean this one out. You gotta watch two lines at once, which is not easy. But watching up the top side and then also down the face. I should never have put that pencil mark on there. I should have at least removed it because I can't see the knife line as a result. I'm afraid I'm drifting over into it. It might need to be released from up here. Yeah. Okay. All right, put this away. Now, I've added a base to my router plane, just so that it would give me more reference surface. That's a Lee Nielsen large router plane. I like it of all the ones that are currently offered for sale. Put this in the vise. And check this. I'm going to put my headgear on for a second so I can check and see where this is in terms of depth. So what I'm looking to do is to line the blade up with that marking gauge line we made. I always like to keep a little bit of tension on that locking screw so that when you adjust the blade there's no it doesn't slip. Okay, that looks to be good right there. Snug that up. There's a slot in there for a reason. Sometimes helps to give that a little more locking. Okay, so when we're using this, we don't want breaking fibers off, so I'm gonna I'm going to shear it with the cutter facing in. 
if you were to come out this way, you may be lifting fibers, but if I go up that side like so, a little bit of uh, inward pressure and shearing cut. I think I went too low with my saw. Well, maybe not. Now I got a lot of pressure on my left hand, keeping this locked down. That cutter is wanting to pull pull the plane down that way. So I've got to counter that with the force I'm applying with my left hand. The advantage of having that bigger base on there it gives you more bearing surface. Now I'm just going to come right into the corner, get rid of this stuff. Now while I've got that there on there, I can see I left a little bit of my line. So I'm going to have got my shoulder plane set up so that the blade is flush on this side. Bring my lamp down. Okay. Now, in order for this to work, this has this surface has to be nice and flat. Don't want any bumps in there that are going to make that plane ride high. Okay, I've got a little more, if, if, I don't know if you can see it, but the, you can see the knife line and I've got material left on the waist side. And it's actually, it was a pretty good cut in terms of the fact that there's the same amount of waste one end to the other. So I'll just go in and clean that up until we're right down to the knife line. And if we start getting closer to the knife line on one end than the other, then we'll just adjust accordingly. Okay, so like I just said, I'm almost almost to the line up here, but not quite down here. So what I'm going to do is take a series of cuts and then remove, then go a little bit farther and lift a little bit farther still and look real close. I think one one pass should do it. Now, I'm also looking right here with these glasses on and I can see that I've got a little bit of a knife edge still left there. So that means I can go a little bit deeper with this plane. What I was watching for was just to wait for that little knife edge to disappear. Now, the hand tool is slower, but I love the control that I get as opposed to using power tools where you hope everything is set up properly you can't do a lot about it once you start engaging the wood. This way I can make small adjustments as needed. I'm just using the point of that cutter to go in there tight into the corner to make sure I don't have anything left. Didn't quite get all the way. Okay, now we've already done this one, on the miter that is. Shoot, I probably should have waited to do that. I left it square first. Not a bad idea to have taken that off. Did, probably should have done it like this. Gone in there with the uh, router plane, uh, finished this surface, then come in and cut the miter. Because now I can't clamp it like I would, but I can always grab, grab a another type of clamp and hold it in place. Okay, so this is the side that you're going to see, not in here. So I'm going to 
shear from this side. Again, lots of, pre lots of downward pressure with my left hand. Now it's easier to work this way and the grain's running in my favor this way, so I'm gonna, now that I've got the outside part taken care of, I'll come in and do the rest of it from this side. Quick look. I see a little bit of material right on here. None down here, so I'm gonna come in here with my chisel and see if I can't just clean that up to the knife line. We may still have to come in and address this surface anyway, but I definitely saw material that was in the way, so best to get rid of it now. All right, let's check this out. That came out well. Okay, so we've got a good tight miter. Look at our shoulder joint in here. That comes up tight. It's almost slush, but we could clean that up with the plane. And then once it's glued up, we would go in and we would just get rid of that little bit of excess right there. So it gives us a fair bit of glue surface, particularly for a miter. I wouldn't want to be much wider, or terribly wide, because as the wood shrinks, your miter is going to open up. But that's how to do it with just hand tools. Now the next one we're going to do, we'll go over to the bandsaw and we'll do the uh, end lap. Give me a second to clean up here and then we'll start that one. Okay, I squared up the ends that are going to be addressed. Now we'll come in here and just get a mark on there. It's a bit far for the marking gauge, but we could do it, but yeah, let's do it. That's almost at the extent of the usable distance on a marking gauge, but being pine, it's relatively soft. I'm just guessing on the halfway mark. Now this one's going to be on the bottom side. Okay, so we'll go over to the bandsaw. There's going to be some handwork in this if you want a really good joint. This is going to be our waist. And this one will be the opposite. Now, I'm just thinking how best to make that cut. We could use a table saw, but I'm gonna save the table saw for doing that one. We could use it, we can use the band saw, but it's not gonna give us a perfect joint, but let's see what we can do. I'm gonna take a square over with me. I've got a 15 inch general that I'm gonna do this on. First thing I wanna do is check and make sure that the blade is square to the table. Not quite, it's got to go tip this way just a little bit. Well, there's probably a stop in there that's preventing that from going as far as we need to. There is. All right, give me just a second while I go in and adjust that. Okay, this is easy to adjust because the uh, adjustment rod is actually not tightened. It just had to, it could move up or down just by giving a little bit of a twist. So that's nice and square. Now I'll bring that down to just above the height 
that I need. And I think I'm going to make this cut first. I want to make sure that my miter gauge is square to my fence. Since I'm going to reference off of that. Now we'll go in there like this. Use that as a stop, then we only have to set it up once. Let's see if we can actually do this right off of the saw and have it... remember now we need to go in and rip those cheeks off we got to get that set up right at the halfway point Shouldn't be eyeballing this. have a scrap to be checking this with. And I'm going to set my blade on this right to the bottom of that from referencing from here to the bottom there and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And it's really close. Let's try it. Okay. What are we doing? We're keeping our good piece on the inside. Cooking a little pine. My left hand is just keeping the board tight to the fence. All right. And I will use a chisel. To get those corners nice and clean. If I had a lot of these to do, I would set that saw to be, I would take the time to set it up to be perfect so I didn't have to come in and do any work afterwards. But for only a couple, this just takes a few seconds. Okay, now, how bad did that miss? I didn't expect to get a great cut across the grain like that off of that saw, but we could clean it up. That's act that actually came out fairly well. It obviously wasn't set at the right depth because we've got a little excess material here, which would have to be compensated for by either planing this down and this one, or changing the setting, obviously. But let's see if we can't get that shoulder work just a little bit better. I don't like the fact that it's not square, so... OK. 
come in here. Now, what you're able to do depends on how much excess material you have. If you were right on your lines and you couldn't afford any altering like I'm doing, you'd be in trouble. And as I said, if I was using the bandsaw for that, I would have gone in with a scrap and checked everything first. Now, this is soft enough that we can go in there with a chisel and just pare that straight down. Now I'm going to use this to go in there and make sure that that wall No, it's not going to do what I want it to do Okay, I'm going to come in here and make sure that that's back cut just a little bit. I'll use my shoulder plane. Reference off of this cheek. And the problem is that this, this wall that we just chiseled is not standing square. You got to make sure that you've done that little relief cut back there or else this will break out on that far side. Now I'm just going to go until it's tight right up here at the top. That joint line up against the plane. You heard that little tick. That was some wood letting go. Okay, that's better. Obviously they're not flush because this has to be planed down. But there's our two sides. So again, you got a fair bit of glue surface. And these, that, that came off that bandsaw pretty good. I wouldn't, go, I don't think I'd even have to go in there and touch that up with the router plane. But that will give you that shoulder, that square shoulder on both sides will give you a fair bit of strength, which will prevent racking. And with that amount of glue surface in there, that would be a good solid joint. Again, I wouldn't go too wide because you're going to get into problems with cross grain construction. All right, change gears. And we'll do this T-lap for the last one. We're going to do that on table saw, get cleaned up. And we'll meet you over there. Okay, I squared up that end, which is the only one Actually, I better do this one as well, just to be sure, in case I have to reference it against the fence on the table saw. So we're going to set that on there. We want a square line. This is going to be done on the table saw, so I'm not going to bother with the marking knife. Mm -hmm. Come 
come over that line just a bit. I'm going to show you how you can sneak up on this. Now this can still be planed a little bit to width. Set our mark engage to the halfway mark. Again, we'll guess on it. Flip it over. Didn't go enough. Try that again. That's good. Okay, so this is waste. And then on this one, we'll take the width of our board. It's the end that we squared. This is going to be the top side. Look and see which is the best. Doesn't really matter. I wish I had uh, had a second marking gauge out. And I would have kept it set at this thickness okay let's go over to the table saw Now the first thing we want to do is get that table saw height to the half the thickness. I'll get it close by eye. I'm going to use a miter gauge to support the work. I've got an auxiliary fence on there. And that should be square. I'll check it just to be sure. Anytime you do this, make sure that you pull that blade in so it's not protruding from the bottom. I teach a lot of classes and I can't believe how many times people have used this for squaring and that blade has been sticking out a little bit and so goes square. Actually, that isn't square. Okay, now we'll make this cut first. I'm going to eyeball this. Now I've got a... I took that too deep. Wasn't smart. I've got a uh, rip blade in there that cuts square on the bottom, which I really prefer because operations like this, you're not dealing with those little rabbit ears. Okay, that's right on the line. Now, I'm going to get close. And in the amount of time it would take me to go find another way to do this, like setting up a, a dado head, I can get rid of it one piece at a time. Or I should say one kerf at a time. Oh my, that did not lock. I thought something was out of whack. Now we gotta go back. We have to move everything a little bit to the right.
Now if I had a whole bunch of these to do, I obviously would find a faster way to do it, but if you're only doing one or two, it doesn't take long. Okay, now that's not quite there. I'm going to take one more pass. Squeezing really hard with my left hand to keep that tight to the fence. It's close and it's as close as I want it to be. I'll go in and clean out that little bit with a chisel. Now we need to cut this piece off. I didn't mark my waist, but I will now. So the first thing we want to do is get this cut right. <clears throat> a couple ways we can do it. If we worry about it being precise, we can come in here with the second piece that we're going to be joining to and set that so that the outside edge of the uh, blade is flush with this side of the board. Keep that tight to the shooting to the uh, miter gauge. Now we could stand this one up on end, meaning make a cut like that, or do it the same way we just did. Now let me show you a jig that I made. I'll actually do the last half this way just so that you can see it. Problem with doing it like this is you don't have a whole lot of reference surface there and people get sometimes nervous. So I make a sleeve. I actually did a YouTube video on, on this. It's made out of one inch MDF. Just make sure there's no debris so that it lays flat on the tabletop. There's four bolts running through. They go over the top. This piece is the same width as the fence on the bottom. So when you tighten these up, it squeezes against the fence. And it gives you a lot of reference surface vertically. Check to make sure it's square. Always keep your waist on the outside. Now, if you're nervous about this, you can clamp a piece up here and that'll prevent it from moving, but... Almost on the line. That's good. Now, I took that other one down a little bit deeper, so I'm going to move it over a little bit more. One more. All right. Now we'll just clean up a little bit of material we left on the bottom. Could use your router plane here as well. But this there wasn't a lot to be removed. Bottom of that of that is smooth. Now it's really close to fitting, so what I'm gonna do is go in and using my shooting board.
pull the blade in so I'm taking a very fine cut. I want to remove the jointer marks, power jointer marks that is. Oh, one pass. One very, very light pass. There you go. Now again, we left that, we took that down a little bit too deep, but we can flush that up and for the sake of seeing it done right. We'll do that right now. Oh, it's sitting up too high, isn't it? Clean the other one first. Second, I'm gonna get a mark on here. I can plane that one down to it. I'll get this one done first. See that little feather from the chisel. Okay, I'm playing this one. Take a pass, clean this up. Okay, so there's your T lap, if you want to call it that. Makes for a nice strong joint, lots of glue surface. Weakness, as I mentioned, you've reduced the strength of this to one half that thickness. But if this is a part of a face frame that's gonna be then glued and nailed or glued onto a carcass, then there's no problem at all and it's not gonna come apart on you. So there's your table saw. There's your band saw. And the one that I felt always have the most control was when we did the one with hand tools. Take your pick. I think there's always room for both hand and power tools. Power tools will do the majority of the work. Hand tools are going to do the finesse. that will get it just the way you want it. Hope this helped. See you.